Our next stop takes us down Bayou Lafouche and the town of Thibodeau. Now, Thibodeau was a town that was fit for a Spanish queen, even though she never ended up there. Now, some of the residents of Thibodeau consider their town the prettiest, neatest, and friendliest little city in southern Louisiana, and they make a strong case. If you did not grow up in Louisiana or had some background in French, the pronunciation of this Lafouche Parish town would be impossible. When I was in the army, they would say, Thibodox, <laughs> they couldn't pronounce the word at all. I, I once heard somebody describe Thibodeau as a city of schools and churches and bars and lounges. The origins of the Thibodeau way of life begins with Bayou Lafouche, a 100-mile stretch of water that forks off the Mississippi River in Donaldsonville and leads into the Gulf of Mexico. Thibodeau is roughly halfway down the bayou. It is known as the Queen City of Lafouche, as well as the town where yesterday welcomes tomorrow. We were welcomed by Thibodeau native Gibbons Robichaux. Gibbons, what's in a name? How did Thibodeau get its name? Henry Scala Thibodeau found him back in the early 1800s, yeah. He ended up over here, like all Spanish and French people, he ended up over here. And I think he, he, think he the Bayou, Bayou Terrebonne and Bayou Lafouche is what attracted him and a lot of people to this area. There wasn't any sugar cane then, but they saw the, the value of the land where they could plant things, you know. And the two buyers for trade, and that's how Homa and Thibodeau came about. And you right? know who Henry Schuyler yeah, is. Well, he's kin, uh, right? Yeah. I wish I could have met him because he's my great, great, great grandfather. The town of Thibodeau also welcomed Spanish royalty, almost. Over 200 years ago, Queen Maria Luisa of Spain built Ryanzi. Legend has it that this home was built as a retreat for the queen during the French Revolution. The queen did not move in, but it would later be the home to founder Henry Thibodeau. And back in those days of the early 1800s, Bayou Lafouche was a much busier and wider waterway. This bayou back in the day was really the super highway of its That's day, right, huh? exactly. If you talk about bay a bayou, they got plenty of bayous in, in uh, Louisiana. But Bayou Lafouche is probably the longest and was the most popular. And when I take you to the cathedral, you're going to flip over because you're going to see things that they brought down on barges from Europe down the Bayou Lafouche for that cathedral. I mean, the, the pillars weighed 5,000 pounds apiece and they came down the bayou. <laughs> The same year the Beatles debuted on Ed Sullivan, Gibbons Robichaux began playing at the St. Joseph Co-Cathedral. During those 43 years, Robichaux estimates he's played 1,500 funerals and about 500 weddings. This ornate sanctuary was considered the most expensive rural church in Louisiana, costing nearly half a million dollars in 1920. This rose window in the rear of the church is modeled after the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Art, history, and Thibodeau come together with the help of painter Billy Lede. His works of the Ryanzi, as well as Cajun still life, can be seen at one popular Thibodeau eatery. Lede loves bringing Thibodeau history back to life. What's not typical is Billy's way of showing off his grandchildren. Thanks to an idea from his wife, his seven grandkids adorned the family dining room. I would take pictures of the grandchildren when they were about maybe a year old or something like that and do the cherub's bodies and put their faces. And if you notice in the paintings, <laughs> they they go by the first one who's standing there with his arm up and he's got one finger, the next one has two fingers, three fingers, all the way down to our seven grandchildren today. Lede's work is also highly regarded outside of his family. When it came time for Nichols State University to commission an artist to paint the first and only portrait of namesake Francis T. Nichols, the school hired Lede. Francis T. Nichols was uh, governor of Louisiana twice. The left arm missing in the portrait is from the time of the Civil War. Francis T. Nichols was a Confederate general and fought in the Civil War and lost his left arm and part of his foot. 
in the battle. How many students attend Nichols State? Almost 7,000. We're now a selective admissions institution. Okay. We were previously an open admissions institution, and we draw students from Baton Rouge, Lafayette, uh, new audience, that triangle. Thibodeau is home to Nichols State University, first opened in 1948 as a two-year institute. The school is sometimes referred to as Harvard on the Bayou. Nichols State is the home to the John Fulce Culinary Institute and has many distinguished alumni, including Julie Abear, television producer of such acclaimed shows as ER and the West Wing, Barry Melanson, President and CEO of the 350,000 member American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, as well as actor and New Orleans radio personality John Spud McConnell. And of course having Nichols uh, just adds to it because we have cultural programs and sports and I think it adds life and spice to the city of Thibodeau. Thibodeau town folk take great pride not just in their university, they also take pride in their families. They also hold dear to their religious heritage of all faiths. And why you came down here? You came down here because you, you were fascinated with the name, right? Fascinated with the name. Now you're finding out why it's such a popular place. Thibodeau has one of the largest volunteer fire departments in the country, and every spring they hold the firemen's fair and parade that draws roughly 50,000 people. Every summer, hundreds of youngsters rush to Nichols State University for the Manning Passing Academy, led by Archie Manning and his two NFL quarterback sons, Eli and Peyton. 